Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Everyday I'm Mothering. Today I wanted to specifically talk about how you can homeschool when you have children in different levels of programs. So you might have children that are different ages, but they're going through the same level in your homeschool curriculum. So then, you know, that's pretty straightforward about how you do it. But there are a lot of us that have children that are wide enough gapped or we start at different times and they're doing different levels in a program. And that can be really challenging when you're trying to plan, you know, your time, your day, you're going to be able to fit all of it in. So I wanted to share exactly what we do and some things that I have learned that make it a little bit easier to be able to actually do different levels with your children. So for us, we use the Torchlight program. And if you don't know what that is yet, I have a lot of videos on my channel about it. You can see the general one here. Then I also have level specific ones, but that is our main piece of curriculum. Now my seven year old right now is doing level two and my five year old is doing level K. So I am trying to balance both of those pieces. Now I'm not talking about math and English. Those are separate. There are different levels as well. But for the most part, that's pretty straightforward about how you balance that piece. But for the torchlight curriculum levels, that's where I hear the most people struggling on how to do multiple levels at one time. Overwhelmingly, the advice seems to be when people ask this question that they should just combine levels. And while that does work really well, you know, especially for ages that are close together, that's not the end all solution. But I don't want people to have the misconception with Torchlight that it's just too hard and impossible to do multiple levels, that you should just always try to combine levels. Because while that's great, it doesn't necessarily work for everyone. So I started Torchlight when Elena was in kindergarten. And at the time, Adeline was three, you know, pre-K didn't even exist as a level for Torchlight. So I focused just on Elena, Adeline joined in when she wanted to, but we've every year moved through the programs with level K, level one, and now level two, pretty much following, you know, the kindergarten, first grade, second grade. But now that Adeline is entering kindergarten, you know, she is not ready for the level two work. And I didn't want to halt Elena at level one and try to do level K and beef it up for her. That just wouldn't have worked well for us. So I knew that I wanted to do level K and level two. There's not a lot of advice out there about how to logistically do multiple levels. That's what this video is about. Some tips that I've learned and then at the end I'll share our actual, you know, weekly routine so you get a better idea of that. But I just want to say at the very beginning, this is possible. Please don't let people deter you. If this is what you think will work best for your family, you absolutely can do multiple levels of Torchlight at one time. And then also, not only am I doing two levels with my five and seven year old, but I also have a two year old that just runs crazy in this house. So I'm balancing those with her as well. So some of these tips, you know, are kind of tailored around the idea that you may have a younger one in there. If you don't, then it'll take away, you know, one distraction at least. But if you do have a toddler, you know, that has its own set of challenges. And I'm going to do a separate video later specifically about how to homeschool with a toddler running around. But just know with some of these, you know, that does come into play when we're doing our routine and our schedule as well. First thing that I want to stress is flexibility. Please know going into Torchlight, you do not have to follow this curriculum as it's laid out. Now, if you've seen any of my review videos or you've watched our first day or our planning video, you know that we do not follow this curriculum like that. It can seem really overwhelming if you are trying to follow this, especially with multiple levels. When you have different reading books for all the different subjects and you're just reading a few pages of them and trying to jump back and forth every day with these levels, if you can do that, you know, that's awesome if that works for you. For me personally, that would give me such anxiety trying to track all that and think about when to stop and where's my stuff and it would be really hard for me to stay organized and keep everyone focused. So just remember, these curriculums are completely flexible. You can pull the pieces out, you can do them when it works for you, what order it works for you, whatever makes the most sense for you and your learners and the way your day is set up. And around that same train of thought, you can move away from that you know, notion that you have to think of it as daily schedules with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Instead, I really recommend looking at it as more of a week approach. That way you can pull out you know, what's gonna work best for you on what days and what the flow will be. And just for me personally, that is so much easier to look at and conceptualize than trying to really nail down this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday schedule. It's just too much and too overwhelming for me, 
from a planning perspective. So I like to really look at it from the week overview. And when you have multiple levels going on at one time and you step back and you're looking at it from the week approach, then you can say, you know, on what days do I want to do maybe a subject matter for both levels? Or what days do I want to just focus on a certain level? So you have some flexibility there, again, flexibility, and what you want to do when you pull away from that day by day, you know, curriculum layout, and you think of it more in terms of a week totality and how you can change that up and move it around to work best for you. And while we're talking about it from, you know, a week overview, I also want to strongly caution you about all of the supplements and the extras and the add-ons. Now, I know, especially if you happen to be in the Torchlight curriculum discussion page on Facebook, and if you're not, by the way, you really should join because it's a great resource. But I know there, if you start looking on other social media platforms, you'll see so many great ideas and suggestions from parents who are doing Torchlight. But, you know, the flip side of that is a lot of people will start looking at that and start feeling inadequate or that they're not doing enough or just that that looks so overwhelming seeing all this other stuff people are coming up with that you know isn't part of the curriculum especially if you're balancing multiple levels it can be hard enough fitting all this in without putting that extra pressure on yourself to do even more while that looks great you know please remember other people's strengths might be in arts and crafts and drawing coming up with those type of ideas but they may not be you know, really strong in some other areas that you excel in. Just try to keep that in mind. Really try not to you know, compare yourself to others and their journeys, and don't think that you have to add on more. And that is something that I admit I struggle with. You know, when we were just doing one level at a time, I would see all these things. I would look up extra add-ons every week, and it oftentimes led me to be really overwhelmed, and then I would feel bad when I didn't get to do some of those crafts or some of those, you know, experiments with my girls and I saw all these other people doing them. And you start to ask, well, you know, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do all this too? Why are we struggling so much? And that's not the place you want to be in. So just at least for the first couple of weeks, try to just stick with the curriculum. Find your routine, find your flow with doing the multiple levels. And then you might find that there's a day of the week that seems light for you and there seems like there's extra time in that day. And that can be the day that maybe you wanna start adding in some things, but please don't take all that on at the beginning and really stress and overwhelm yourself. Just take it slow, stick with the curriculum for the first couple of weeks, and then slowly add things in that you're interested in, that your children like. Not what looks good from somebody else and what looks amazing, but what you guys are just naturally interested in. What are your kids asking questions about? What do they like to do? And then build in those little things. And if you don't get to one week, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. Kids will be fine and you're still doing an awesome job. Also, you know, if you don't have time for things, especially in level K with the cooking, that is something that as awesome as it sounds and you know, it just seems like such a neat idea and people, you know, they dress up or they have these big like celebration. They look at all this information about the countries and they do these huge art projects and they have this huge spread of food. And I'm like, oh, that seems so amazing. And it's one of those things that realistically, it, we've tried to do it a couple times, ends up just being a chaotic nightmare for us. So we do, you know, try to do, you know, the cooking once a week and we try to do something simple that I can do with three girls in the kitchen. But there are some weeks where I'm exhausted, where we just don't have the stuff, I haven't cooked, I haven't planned, whatever it is, we're just not gonna be down there cooking. And it is okay to just do a little cheat and get carry out. I think a couple weeks ago maybe we were doing grease and I had in my mind we were gonna do this big spread and all this stuff. It did not happen. That morning, you know, instead of feeling down about it and feeling like we're getting behind again, I sat down with my daughter, we went to the website of a local Greek restaurant and we had so much fun putting together a takeout order for us. She liked looking everything up, comparing it to what we read about. We ordered it online, you know, my husband picked it up, we brought it home and we put it out in, you know, like real dishes, looking like I had cooked it or something. And we spread it out and we had such a nice night with the music playing and getting to taste all the different foods, but it's what worked for us. I didn't have to stress, I didn't have to cook it that day. It was still just a neat experience. 
So feel free to do things like that sometimes too. The most important thing is that, you know, it tries to be as stress-free as possible and you're just having fun with it, no matter what it ends up looking like. After we've done that overview look, I'm gonna get down more into the days. And again, flexibility here comes into play. But know that homeschool does not take the amount of time that traditional school does. If this is your first year, that's gonna seem like a strange concept, but you can knock a lot of this stuff out in a very short amount of time. Don't be overwhelmed by the thought of how long it should take, but also don't be concerned if it goes quickly. You know, on the flip side of that, you have people saying, we got through this stuff in like 45 minutes. Am I missing something? What's wrong? No, like this does not have to take that long. So with that said, you know, really look at your day, your morning, your afternoon. And when you're teaching multiple levels, don't roll out some of those more unusual times. You might want to take advantage of an evening or weekend, you know, when your partner is home that maybe they can help as well if you need distractions for some kids or just extra hands to help you do all of this. Now, we've definitely had to move away some from that Monday to Friday type thought process around traditional schooling. And you know, there are times on the weekends where we have to do some projects or I need a little bit of help because I've gotten behind or I need to focus with one child. So we do utilize that some as well. Outside of those extra times though, you really wanna think about what time of the day each of your children does best as far as focusing or learning with this type of material. Some people are really focused in the morning and for some, you know, it's a later in the day I know a lot of people have said their children just will not sit still for these books. You know, we don't personally have that issue because my children will just sit and want me to read forever to them. It's more likely for us that I'm losing my voice at that point. But you do have that issue where your children just aren't engaged or it seems like it's more of a chore for them to sit and get through this reading. Please consider, you know, maybe doing reading at lunchtime, snack time when they're also eating or move it to bedtime. There is no reason that you can't do some of these chapter books and the literature at night. Make it part of your bedtime routine. You know, ultimately one of the main goals and the pulls towards Torchlight is that it's such great literature. We want our children to be excited about reading, but if it's set up in this negative way of them having to sit still and it's like a chore and they're reading this and they don't look forward to it, then we're doing them, you know, really a disservice and not building that love, which is what we wanted to begin with. So if it works best, cuddle them up at night, read it in bed before they go to sleep. That's perfectly fine. If they need to be eating, if they need to, you know, doodle, maybe they need to draw whatever it is you're reading about and that helps them focus, that's fine too. Take it outside, you know, whatever works. It does not have to be a traditional sitting down, you know, talking at them or a set amount of hours. Just have some flexibility in where and when you can do the work. I know that can be easier said than done, again, when you're working with multiple levels and children who may work best at different times of the day. So that's the point in identifying this now and then seeing how can you change the day or the layout so that it does work best for each of your children if they have those different styles. And that leads to that struggle of if you're working with one child on a level, what is the other child doing? I know some people have struggled with their children wanting to really be involved with whatever the other one's doing or not being able to separate them or get them to focus on their level. I'll say for us, I have always had an open approach where anyone was welcome to join in on a different level. You know, even from the beginning when it was just Elena, Adeline could always join in. And now Elena is always welcome to join in when we do level K and she really actually enjoys it and she's getting something different from it now than she did when she went through it the first time. So I actually think it's really beneficial, but she is much more likely to feel left out than Adeline is. So I wanna make sure she always knows she can come, she can be included. But with that said, when it comes time to really discuss and get answers and talk through things, I do make a point that is Adeline's level first and foremost. So I really want her to be the one to engage with me first and give her ideas first before Elena does. That way she is having a chance to form those on her own and move through the program herself. Now, when we do Elena's level, for the most part, you know, Adeline's welcome to join, but she doesn't want to. She's not engaged with these books. You know, it's a little too advanced for her and that's fine. She goes off, she plays independently, she does her thing. You know, sometimes taking my toddler with her, but that's fine. But when we start to do the science experiments and the art and craft projects on either level, you can be sure the other one is running in and they're ready to do that part too. And so we do, all of those things are done with both of them at one time. 
Now, with my toddler, she again is welcome to join us. She is up and down. If you saw my first day video, you will see how she was just constantly up and down. We're trying to read. Sometimes she'll lay with us and read and sometimes she doesn't. But you know, that's again, like I said, its own set of challenges, but I always keep it open. I don't try to separate them and we just let everybody come and do it. The way that we're able to do that and make it work for us is how we've set up our routine. Talk about that at the end, but I just think it is important to let them come and join in as they want to. Even though I just said that I like to let everyone join in if they want to, you know, there are times when they don't want to, or I do need to still focus on one child because it's something they really are struggling with, or it's something we really need to work on. So what I have found best for that is to have plenty of workbooks, activity books, other things that I can get, you know, the other child working with and engaged on so that I can focus my time. Primarily that comes into play with math and English, which we do in the afternoon because that's when my toddler is asleep. So that's when I can actually do those things with all the manipulatives out and all of that. But during that time, I will have the other one focused on, you know, whether it is a curriculum book, some type of arts and crafts book. And I had a video here where I unboxed just some examples of those type of things we use in that situation. But then also for Elena at this age, that's when she'll do her Beast Academy or her Grammar Galaxy. And I'll talk about those in future videos as well. But then Adeline will also like to do, you know, some games online or we have some other type of little games that she can play. With her, it's a little more challenging because I can't just hand her a workbook. She can't read yet. So, you know, I have to be careful in what I pick with her unless I want her to constantly be interrupting Elena and myself during math and English. But having things like that on hand is a great tool of keeping them distracted when you do need to focus. Now, those things are things that I will keep up and I don't let them play with other times, especially like the painting, arts and crafts, because I want them to be excited when it comes out and actually focused and wanting to do it without interrupting. So having things like that is key to help you when you do need to juggle and balance, you know, different subjects. Okay, so all that's great as an overview, but you know, really and realistically, how does it play out, right? So I wanna share exactly what our week looks like as far as from a routine and what we've been doing. Now I haven't shared this in the past with my planning videos because I didn't know how it was gonna work. This is our first time having two levels. I wanted to give it a few weeks to see how it would play out and if we need to change things before I really you know, shared what we were doing. But we're on week four now, and I am really happy with the routine and the schedule that we have found ourselves in. And so far, you know, it's going really well. Now, that doesn't mean I might not have a hiccup later on, but for now, what we're doing has been pretty successful and staying on path for level K, and level two, and then of course with our math and English. So the way that we have approached this is that we will typically do torchlight in the morning time and then math and English in the afternoon because like I said, that's when Emmeline is asleep and we can focus and really do those programs since they have so many manipulatives and games. I just could not imagine doing that with Emmeline up pulling into all that. So we do torchlight in the mornings. On Monday, we do level K only but we do not do level two on Mondays and so far we have been able to get through all of level K for the entire week on Monday mornings and I will say it probably takes us an hour hour and a half if that uh, just depending on how everybody's mood you know is but it's about how long it will take us to knock it all out there was maybe one week where there was a Zoe and Sassafras book and we read a couple chapters of it you know, a couple more days through the week, but mostly we've been reading all the Mercy Watson, all of the other books, Monday morning in about an hour and a half chunk of time. So for the rest of Level K curriculum, you know, that's really just your music or any arts and crafts science projects. We will listen to the music during lunchtime throughout that week. And any arts and crafts and science projects, we save till later in the week. So after that on Monday morning, we'll do more just free play and lunch, music, and then our math and English and gymnastics, and that's it for the day. Then we move on to Tuesday. That is our level two day. So on that day, we are doing only level two torchlight. So we'll start with all of Elena's books, her pantomime poetry. And for the most part, we get probably 75% of the readings done 
on Tuesday. That's also when we like any of her Truth and a Lie books, any of the comic or the writing book pieces. We'll do all of that on Tuesday. Now that one takes a little bit longer usually than the level K. So I would say it's closer to probably about two hours in the morning for us. Of course, that one's gonna have a little more interruptions for my youngest two, and I expected that. So that's why we've built in two days to really hit the level two readings. But then after that, it's the same as, you know, Monday from lunch on. Wednesday, we are finishing up anything that we hadn't done yet for level two. So any outstanding readings. I always like to start our day doing the pantomime poetry from, you know, Tuesday onward. And my younger girls love being included in that as well. So that's a good thing, kind of get them up and moving and starting the day. And then when we do snack times during those mornings, that's when we'll watch any of the videos that are tied into either one of the levels. Both of my girls will watch videos for either of the levels. And we always just do those during snack time. Now that doesn't usually take as long on Wednesday morning. So that's when we'll typically also do their piano. Then after that, again, it's just the same on for Wednesday afternoon. But then Thursday is where I really changed things up for us this year. We have always struggled with getting the arts and crafts and the science projects done. We just always seem like we run out of time and those are the things that would get, you know, scrapped. And those are some of my kids' favorites. And so I really wanted to make sure that didn't happen this year. And with two levels, that's even more things to be doing and tracking. So I decided to just have a day solely dedicated to science and arts and crafts. And that's Thursday. So the weekend before, I will get my tote and I will look at anything that's needed for all of the arts and crafts and all of the science. And I will put everything in that tote so that I have it and it's ready to go. Then we come downstairs, they know it's Thursday, they get excited, they know it's science and arts day, and we will do all of the science labs together, back to back. We will do any of the medieval arts projects. If they have any art projects from, especially like Adeline's, we'll do those then. Now I don't typically do like the comic books at this point because that's a really good thing to do, you know, doing the math and English in the afternoon when I'm trying to distract the other one. That's when Elena will do most of her writing and drawing for comics, but Adeline's been having a blast with that too. So she typically makes her own comics during her time. But other than that, Thursday is when we're doing everything else. And so far that has worked out so well for us and I'm so happy with that. We haven't gotten behind on any of the labs or the projects, knock on wood so far, but I'm really happy with how this is working out. And because the girls know it's that day, like they're holding me accountable too to make sure it gets done. And it's just really nice knowing and having that in your schedule. All your readings are done by this point and you can just focus kind of on the fun, the hands-on stuff, all the mess at one time, you know, my, all the children are contained in it and it's just been working really, really well. Then after that, again, it's the same for the rest of the afternoon. And then Friday, we're still using that as our off day. And that is something that I started, I think midway through last year. And it is just a saving grace for us. Having that free day and knowing it's there as kind of a catch all gives you such an ability just to breathe. You feel like you have a little bit of room. It's not so panicked if you get behind. So on Friday, I plan absolutely nothing as far as homeschool curriculum. No torchlight, no math, and no English. Now, if we've gotten behind and we've skipped a lesson somewhere, that's when we'll make it up. If for some reason we didn't get to an arts and crafts project, you know, maybe it was a two day or whatnot, Friday's when we'll catch that up. That's when we'll try to do also our fun outdoor stuff. We might do our nature journaling that day, or we try to get outside, go to a park, or if we have some type of event planned with our friends, you know, whether that's over Zoom or in person, whatever it is, that's when we try to do any of that extra fun stuff is on Friday. And then also, if you're curious about, you know, just housework in general, and I know I've gotten that question, but Friday afternoon is when I'm finding that I can actually do like my deep, not deep, but my big house cleaning. And when we would typically be doing math and English, Emmeline's napping, I can have the big girls during rest time where they read on their own and I can get actually some cleaning done then. And that's what's been working out for us as far as a schedule and just an overall look at the week and trying to juggle these two levels. So I really hope the takeaway from this was to reassure you if you're having doubts about being able to do two levels that you can do this. No matter what other people might say, you absolutely can do two levels. If you're already in that boat with me now, 
you know, I hope that you maybe you got some ideas about how to make it a little bit easier if it is something that you're struggling with. But if you have some other ideas that I didn't mention or if something that's working really well for you, please share it with me below. I wanna know about it. I'm sure other people wanna know about it. And that's what's so great about this is that we can all share and bounce ideas off each other and take pieces of it that's gonna work well for us and our family. So please give this video a thumbs up, click that subscribe button to my channel if you haven't yet so you can be notified of videos, check out my homeschool playlist. I have a ton more videos like this. As always, thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone.